Hey there, I'm Eliza with Ancestral Evolution, and today I'm coming to you with the top five surprising benefits to having some weeds in your garden. Now, it's no surprise to anybody that I'm a little bit of a lazy gardener. I don't always have immaculate gardens or beds without any weeds, but there are some benefits to that, and that's what I'm gonna share with you today. So let's talk about what we mean by a weed. So for today, I'm meaning a weed as anything that I did not purposefully plant in my garden. So the weeds in your garden might be different from the ones in mine, but I would strongly encourage you to know what weeds you have and also to check out some permaculture sites and some permaculture forums for, for more information about whether the weeds that you have are beneficial or not. Obviously, you don't want weeds competing in a major way for light and nutrients. So if you do have weeds that are overshadowing the plants that you want to grow, then you may want to get rid of those weeds, of course. So the first benefit of having some weeds in your garden is they prevent moisture loss. Having soil that has plants growing in it is going to hold on to more moisture than if it's just bare earth. This is especially important if you live in an area that has really low rainfall or it tends to be a drier climate. The second benefit to weeds is that you can use them as mulch. So things like comfrey here can be used as a chop and drop crop which means that the leaves grow really quickly and basically you can just chop them off. And you can use this as mulch for your plants. And you can just lay this at the base of your plants. It's gonna help more organic matter be added to the soil and it's also gonna help your soil retain moisture. Number three is that some weeds can attract pollinators to your garden. One weed that bees really, really love is like these crimson clover flowers. The bees love this stuff and are on it all the time. So I've just left a little clump of it next to my tomato plants in hopes that I have better pollination of my tomatoes. Number four is that some weeds are nitrogen fixers. So that means that they make nitrogen more available to the plants that you're trying to grow. Now traditionally these are things like legumes, like peas and beans and stuff like that, but um, a weed that is a nitrogen fixer is clover. Another one is hairy vetch. Now we years ago put hairy vetch down in our garden as a cover crop and it's just come back every year kind of as a weed basically. So we're getting benefits from that plant, from the nitrogen that it's fixing, even though we have not continued to plant it. Fifth, and finally, is that many weeds are what are called dynamic accumulators. So what this means is that they, their roots go down into the soil and they get nutrients from deep in the soil that your other plants wouldn't necessarily have access to and bring them up closer to the surface. These plants also often have a long taproot that can help break up clay and really compacted soil. So if you do have some areas that are really heavy clay, compacted soil, you may want to leave some of these weeds be. Also, when these roots decompose, they basically act as a channel where water and moisture can penetrate that soil and that, that compacted clay that wasn't there before. Some examples of a dynamic accumulators are dandelions, burdock, comfrey, uh, sorrel, um, amaranth, to name a few. There are many, many plants that fit this category. So this is a burdock plant here, you can see, and the uh, tap roots on these go really far down. Let me show you. So I didn't even get all of this root out but as you can see this this keeps going down and down and down so this root mines for minerals and other nutrients deep in the soil and brings them up to the surface of the soil where the plants can use them so if you have some of your vegetables planted near some of these burdock plants they might benefit from the nutrients and minerals that these plants are bringing up to the surface so anyway hope this was helpful to you support our channel by liking our video and subscribing. Also check out our videos on Skillshare if you're interested in some fermenting classes and fiber related classes. Check that out. All right, we'll see you next time.